In our Catholic tradition, we hear the word discernment, and many will immediately attribute that activity to priests and women religious. Hopefully, we are right, but we may be missing the fullness of what discernment is in the life of the Church. Father Dan and I met at a training in service from Duquesne University for all the new employees. I approached him during a break and introduced myself, and uh, we, you know, had a wonderful conversation. And I described to her how the, the uh, campus ministry at the University of Houston began to flourish is the students recognized that priests and nuns and lay people could be good friends. It created an atmosphere where things could happen, and it was something very natural. So I said, I told Sister that I wanted to start a vocation discernment group and it would be wonderful if there would be a sister who could help. There is no model for this. We talked about this idea, I was excited too, and he said it would be wonderful if we could start a vocation group for women and men who want to discern. Not knowing what you're doing never stopped the spirit from beginning something, even if it might be impossible. Here at Duquesne University, we have a vocations discernment group. Students gather each week for communal prayer, a simple meal, and sharing. Each discerns their vocation individually while being supported by other students, priests, and sisters who participate. While this group is there for women and men to discern their call and their vocation, whether it is to the priesthood, religious life, or being married, Still, the idea is that they have fun with each other and that they can have conversations that they would not maybe have in another group. I heard kind of rumors at first that there was a group that met together in the Laval house and had dinner together. And I thought, oh, that sounds awesome, you know, swap stories with the Spiritans. And I didn't really know exactly what the group was about. Um, but then one of my friends told me that um, he had found it and come in and um, it was, you know, oriented towards discerning your call um, after school and I figured it'd be interesting and probably some good conversations. This prayerful atmosphere also allows for a strong sense of community. Each person offers support to the others who participate. The students get to know themselves, uncover their talents, look within to see what will be fulfilling in terms of their life's work. This is holy work and it can be offered to a wider audience. There's probably inklings in most people uh, that it's going on within them, uh, and they just haven't talked to anybody about it. And so it, it, the group is a great way to have that conversation, whether you're discerning uh, religious life or whether you're discerning to be a marketing major or a supply chain major. Uh, it, it's, it really helps you connect your life as it is now uh, and be able to talk about it with people to relate it to your spiritual life and have a stronger spiritual life no matter what you choose to do. It's a, it's a great group of people. Um, I, I've, I've been really praying and, and in some ways, many ways, struggling with the idea of a discernment, um, discerning my vocation. And what I didn't realize at the time, but now I know I needed, was a group of people who are in the same boat as myself. I came across this group uh, my sophomore year, actually, um, and I heard, I think either in the campus bulletins or somewhere in one of the campus ministry things that there's going to be a some kind of discernment activity, and it's in Laval House. And a friend of mine, uh, he he told me, "Oh, why don't you go?" Because he knew I was discerning a vocation. He knew that beforehand, and uh, I figured, "Okay, I'll go." Often, when we think of how people perceive discernment, we get the idea of vocation recruitment. Mention that you are discerning, and a vocation director will be right along. When you talk about vocations, everyone will invest heavily in recruitment. But the gift of the church is discernment. You can be called to the priesthood, to the religious life, to be married, to be lay. And it's we're, we have this treasure within the church, but we keep it under lock and key. So the idea was, let's start a discernment group. And so we, we decided that we were going to have uh, students come in. We begin with an evening prayer. The Lord is my light and my help. Followed by a simple meal and then a discussion of something. And the students decide what we're going to talk about. Everyone, 
uh, coming with their own idea uh, at their own pace and uh, forming a community. And that formation of community is what gives people that, then that impetus, that ability to both hear and to reply to a call that God might be giving them. It can simply be seen as the prayerful approach to deciding what your vocation in life might be. It is this, without a doubt, but it is also more. I can't really say that I've come to a decisive, like this is what I'm going to do with my life just yet, but I feel like I have a better idea of where I should be uh, developing my spiritual life. I've been able to understand a lot more about my faith and about myself and about others and others that share the same opinions as me and um, it's a lot easier to to talk about it with someone rather than just kind of try and figure it out on your own. If this group has taught me anything it's that um, taking the time to properly discern where God is leading you is one of the most important things you can do uh, for the life that's ahead of you. How poorly we treat this wonderful gift of the church. Many married couples who preferably consider career, education, parenting, and the like. The marvelous gift to the church of preferably considering our life in this world with the support of a group of fellow believers. All is vocation whether it is to religious life, whether it is to priesthood, whether it is to married life, you have to have that place from community that you can listen. You have to have that, that security, that attachment, that support that is around you. Uh, to be part of a praying community, to be part of a community that cares and treasures you. And from that, you have the security, you have the ability to, to respond to the call that God might be uh, giving to you. It's kind of a reality check every week to be able to, to, be able to talk to other people and you know, share what's going on in my life and to be able to relate that to other people's lives. It's a really comfortable, like, easy going environment where everyone gets along. We talk about um, our faith or just like how our day has been. So it's a really nice thing to look forward to in the middle of the week when you have everything else going on in school. Just just knowing these people and knowing that, that they're asking the same questions I am and seeing them over campus, you know, in the chapel, at the music school, just on academic walk, seeing them and, and knowing like this is, this is someone like me, you know, in a way. Even though we're all very different, we're all very diverse. This is a model for a discernment group that works on our campus. But how could you use this in your life or community? I think that this is an effective model, and I think that, that the students come back week after week and invite their friends. We don't take attendance. Um, they can come and go as they want. If they can only stay for part of the evening, they stay for part of the evening, but they're welcome to come, you know, and, and they, they go out of their way on campus to form community. They go to daily mass. You'll see them on academic walk. They'll stop and have coffee with each other. It really has created that, that mutual support among themselves that will favor a, a decision that they'll continue in the discernment.